And we're now happy to be joined uh, once again by Rabbi Yaakov Kermeyer, the former rabbi of Manhattan's Fifth Avenue Synagogue, living here also with a very interesting organization called Yakir. Hello and good to see you and Hag Sameach to you. Hag Sameach to you as well. It's a really a pleasure to be back with you. So first of all, um, listen, Fifth Avenue Synagogue, we all know it, those of us uh, in New York, but explain why being here and your, the Yakir, uh, it's an NGO, it's a nonprofit, correct? Correct. Explain your work and how it's relevant to Sukkot. Yakir exists to bring different segments of Israeli society together when, unfortunately, they don't often come together enough. So That's a polite way of putting uh, what we're all dealing with right now here in Israel, yes. Yeah, except that I even reach beyond the Jewish community to bring together Jews and the loyal non-Jewish citizens of Israel, like the Druze, the Bedouins, mm -hmm. the South Lebanese Christians who came over the border and now send their ch children to serve in the army. So we bring together all of the different groups that want Israel to succeed and to thrive and to achieve greater understanding right. and friendship between those groups. Right, of course, and the Jews people specifically have such an interesting story in their, in their own right. They're loyal to the country in which they live, serve in the army and whatnot. So I imagine that's very fulfilling when you're working with the Jews community here. Very fulfilling and it's especially, I think, meaningful and resonates very strongly when we reach the holiday of Sukkot. Mm -hmm. Of course. Because Suk Sukkot is a holiday, like all of the holidays in the Bible, which has a historical Jewish component, it has an agricultural component, and it also has a universal component. And that universal component about embracing all of the peoples of the world and really understanding and appreciating their humanity and their really their their common spirituality with us is mm. something that's really core to the holiday as well. Right. Um, Rabbi, if you could explain to our viewers kind of the meaning of the Arba'at Haminim, the you know the ritual you're doing in the sukkah and the sukkah itself, why each of these things are so important. Well, the four species on the most basic level, which include the etrog, or the citron, looks a little bit like a lemon, the palm branch, the myrtle branch, and the arava, the willow leaves, those are all tied in to the agricultural part of the holiday. Sukkot is the time when all of the crops from the farmers have been brought into their storage homes, and now the farmer and all of Israel is finally able to take a deep sigh of relief and realize that we're going to have enough to eat and we're going to have enough to live for the year ahead. Mm -hmm. And so it was a day of real great celebration, this holiday of Sukkot this week, because we realized that God had blessed us with agricultural bounty. And so we take samples of that bounty, the four species, and we shake them all around in different directions where God is present in all directions as a way of thanking God for the bounty with which we have been blessed. Mm. The etrog is viewed as a very special fruit because it has taste and also pleasant fragrance. The palm branch, which comes from a date palm, dates are edible, has taste, but it doesn't have any smell. And the myrtle branch, which has fragrance, but no taste. And then finally, the willow, which has neither taste nor smell, are supposed to represent all of the different types of people. People who have taste, knowledge, internal quality, um, people who might not have much depth internally, but are giving people, that's the fragrance which exudes beyond us. The, you know, you have the taste without the fragrance, the fragrance without the taste, and then those individuals who are very simple, plain, and don't seem to have much impact at all, we don't lose sight of anyone. Mm. On Sukkot, we bring everybody together in an embrace and recognize that every human being created in the image of God is of infinite importance. And that is really the symbol of the four species, which can't be taken and each one lifted aloft but on its own. They all have to be brought together. Wow, so beautiful. Also explain in the sukkah itself and the whole idea, also like the or the concealed light, the or haganus you sometimes hear. Explain why sitting in the sukkah and the fact that there isn't a roof, you see the sky, what it does spiritually to people who enter it, everybody who enters it. Again, it's for everybody, like we all said. Well, the sukkah, this very, very basic thatched hut, is something which I th is a very, very important therapeutic response to modernity. And mm -hmm. it's always been a response to whatever was the modernity of the age, mm -hmm. in the sense that we leave our comfortable, sturdy homes 
and we place ourselves in a rather flimsy hut, hut or shelter, we remind ourselves that all of the fancy and glitzy things in life are really not ultimately important. Wow, it's so, so beautifully explained. Thank you so much for, for being with us and explaining the, the deeper hidden secrets behind the holiday of Sukkot. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be with you always.